All right, today we are chatting with Ashley Paulson. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you guys. I'm so excited to be here. I appreciate you guys taking time to chat today. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit before we hit record and I was saying how I've actually ridden quite a bit with you because I have <laughs> uh, a NordTrack bike and use the iFit trainer and I've been on several rides with you. So we're basically best friends already and this will just be more chatting. <laughs> yeah, that's the best thing about iFit is we build a relationship, right? And now I get to see your face. This is amazing. <laughs> I know. It's perfect. Do you have any records in your class? Like, do you have, like, I don't leaderboard think so. stuff? There's, right. like, a lot of com competition out there. Um, right there. Right there. But before we dive in too quickly, give us a little rundown of who you are, what you do. Who I am and what I do. My name is Ashley Paulson, like you said. And uh, first and foremost, I'm a wife and a mother. I've got four kids Whoa. and an amazing husband. Married for 21 years. I know he's the crazy one, not me. He's the one that stuck with me. <laughs> um, I, you know, I just I grew up in Utah, and I've had fitness as a part of my life forever. Basically, I'd see my dad run, and it's just kind of been a lifestyle for me. And I've been really blessed to be able to take that into a career, actually. And so now I race professionally as a triathlete. I have been coaching classes, fitness classes for 20 years now, and I'm super passionate about fitness, and I'm glad to share that with the world, you know? It's just quite a blessing to be able to share that with everybody, you know? And give them a little peace, you know? Become best friends with people that get a ride with me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what's, your, what's your distance for the try that you prefer? I prefer the full distance okay. triathlon. Like the 140.6 is my... My thing, because I need that that extra run. So that's a, a half Ironman or that seventy point three. I'm gaining a little bit, but then we're done. Uh, so I need people to wear out a little bit more, so I can catch up on the run a little bit. <laughs> I like that. That doesn't surprise me at all. Just that marathon. just knowing that you do all of the things. I just imagine you do the furthest distance possible. Um, of, of course. <laughs> Wait, are we not going to ask her what shoe she uses for the marathon? Not yet. Okay. We, okay. I really want to start oh, with way back because I think I read you're um, one of 11 siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear about your childhood and then sort of, I know your dad was a runner and that's sort of your introduction to it. But like, when did you like fall in love with like the endurance world? The, word, the endurance. Okay. So yeah, like. Um, being number nine of 11, I mean, you just, you have to have endurance right there, right? I mean, <laughs> you got to be able to keep up with everybody. Otherwise you're going to get left behind. <laughs> so yeah, I had, um, uh, quite a big family and, you know, just my dad is an entrepreneur, always trying something new, super proud of him and his endeavors, but we, he didn't have, make a lot of money for, especially for 11 kids. So we were pretty poor. We were pretty like... Um, we were the family that was kind of a little made fun of because, well, there's 11 of us. It's unique and that in of itself. And we didn't have the money to keep up on the trends. And we were homeschooled at that. Now homeschooling is the new norm, right? But 30 plus years ago, it wasn't. So it was it was kind of like an, an interesting thing um, being that kid that was picked on, you know. And so I'm able to relate to some of the kids and never bullied so much that I was like beat up or anything, but it was, you know, a little bullying happening that always tears down your, your self-esteem and your confidence. And I found like uh, such um, comfort and strength when I started running, when I would be out moving my body. Oh, hi, my cat wants to say hello. <laughs> um, and so I would, you know, I, I started running at quite a young age because I'd see my dad out there every day. Depend, it didn't matter if it was hailing, if it was, you know, 85 degrees, 100 degrees, he'd be out there getting his five miles in. And it was just something he would do. It didn't seem like a chore. It didn't seem like, oh, I had to lose this weight. It was just part of his lifestyle. And so it was something that was just that's what you do, right? You get out and, and move your body. So I'm, I feel really blessed that um, that was the example I, I had. And same with my mom. She wouldn't be running, but she would be moving her body. And I was, like I said, I was homeschooled. So that part of our PE was doing 
um, like sweat into the oldies. I'm yeah. not even kidding. I love Richard <laughs> Simmons. I freaking love Richard Simmons. He holds a special place. And uh, like, and th- those are the memories of him running and then her doing sweat into the oldies and me being able to like dabble in both. And so when I had my, my kids, I was like, Hey, I want to be a stay at home mom, but I really want to be able to be in this fitness world too. And that's when I decided that maybe I could be a fitness instructor. And, and so I went and got certified and, and dove into that world. And, you know, that's where endurance actually as odd as that may sound. It, that helped me so much my endurance because I'd be teaching you know, up to five classes, six classes yeah. a day. And it, that's going to build your endurance. And so it wasn't for a long time after that I got into Ironman and stuff, but teaching those classes, cycling classes after cycling classes, and then kickboxing and needing to bring that energy helped build my base and build that endurance that I feel like when I did finally dabble into that world, it was like, oh, yeah, this is what I need to be in. What's insane about that is that you, you think about, okay, for a normal person to take your class, they're like, okay, I want a high energy person to lead me. And they they come in there and they're exhausted after that half an hour. So, or however long you're on the bike. And then you had, at that point, you're doing five classes. So you got to be high energy for five classes, not just do the workouts, but be entertaining and pumping people up and getting it. Like, that's like next level, I think, endurance. <laughs> well, I feel like... Um... A lot of that, like you, you get adrenaline when, whether I'm teaching a class for a POV, when it's just me and the camera guy, those, the camera goes on. It's like, no, these athletes at home that are watching this, they deserve a good workout. And it gives me that energy. We're going to a, a gym and being dead tired before going into class. Like all the muscles are sore and I'm like, how am I going to get through this? But then once that music starts going, mic's on and we're warming up, I'm like, I, that energy comes to me because one, I'm passionate about it Two, Like, I feel like, like I said, they deserve my energy that they showed up for. And I wouldn't want to rob them of that. It's rare that I have to like fake that energy, but I won't lie. It has been done. That I'm, like, <laughs> I'm really just, or I'm in a bad mood and it happens. It does. Then I'm like, but you, you can't go out there and just be like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Before, before, <laughs> you know, like, it's dropping them. Yeah. Be- it's not fair on their part. Before we move on, I, I do want to touch, like, 11 siblings. And like you said, you had to learn to catch up or stay stay fit enough to, to be part of the group there. Are any of them also uh, athletes in the endurance sport, or are they doing other physical? Yeah, I mean, my family, for the most part, they're um, they're fit. They don't, they don't do it quite like I do it. I kind of took it to the extreme. Um, I do have a sister that runs, like, um, she's run a few hundred milers. She was actually my inspiration for everything besides my dad. It was, it was her that, it was her idea that she's like, I want to be a fitness instructor. And she was my idol. Like, she's my older sister. And I'm like, I want to be just like her. If she's going to be a fitness instructor, I want to be. And then she ran a marathon, so I wanted to run one with her. And so she was my inspiration there, and she still is is doing those um, longer events and loves the trails, but she's more trail um, rather than, like, the triathlon. Uh, she did promise me she'd do a full Ironman if I did a 100-miler, so I'm still waiting on that because I've done a few of those 100-milers. So nice. She better. Yeah, that doesn't forget. sound fair. But, yeah, she did it, and one of my bro- a couple of my brothers have done marathons, um, a couple, but... I really found that passion and that joy and it gave me that confidence. Like I said, like I didn't have any growing up and that's what really helped build that up for me. Um, and so it's, it's just what I need. And I feel like it's, I feel like it's a silly, and, but I feel like it's a calling for me that to share that with the world um, and a blessing. So what had you done before that, that gave you the confidence to, to go ahead and take on the marathon challenge at, at- at such a young age nothing really like I didn't run in high school I mean I ran in high school I didn't do cross country track or anything like that it was it was really my sister she's like if I can do it Ashley you certainly can as well you um and so she's the one that kind of talked me into it not you know like let's do this together um 
And I had no idea what training was supposed to look like, fueling or anything like that. It was just you go out and do long runs, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I just we to do it together. And we had never – I had done a few 5Ks. I don't even think I had done a 10K. I think I had done two 5Ks um, when I was just little. And then we went right to the marathon. And I fell in love with it. I – um, I stayed with Tracy that entire time and I had such a blast with her, like too much of a blast that I, she did actually tell me to shut up in the middle of the <laughs> I was going to ask like, like <laughs> a lot of people, their first marathon is usually one of two things. It's either I love the marathon. I'm doing this again, or I hate this yeah, and I'm never, never do doing another yeah, one. One and done or forever marathoner. And I was yeah forever a marathon and I was hooked. How long did it take you until you signed up for your next one? You know, it, it actually did take me, it was two years later because okay. shortly after I got married and then very quickly after, three months after um, we were married, I got pregnant with my twins. And so twins. I didn't run my next marathon until two years later. Okay. Um, after the I first Identical or fraternal? I'm always curious. They're identical. Oh, They're wow. identical. They look very different because they dye their hair different now and do their makeup different. And, um, but growing up, like people cannot, you could not tell them apart. That's crazy. So Insta family like that, just yeah. like that. But that's, it's interesting that, you know, I think you, again, yeah. you have people who Megan said one and done with the marathon. You have people who have <laughs> kids and they're like, okay, now I'm going to put that to the side and focus on this. But it, it's always interesting that it seems to be some people come back stronger from pregnancy. It's like they become more endurance, yes. like, like strength. I don't know. Especially, I mean, you Do you have kids? Do you have yeah. Kids? Yeah. And like the, the blood actually, like if you get, if you stay fit during your pregnancy um, and then with I think they say up to a year you have so much more blood it's almost like your blood doping because of the, the oh, pregnancy wow. like you can get in the best shape and have the best times if you're able to get right back out there and do it but a lot of people are like oh I'm tired oh this and the baby um but you can find the your best fitness post-pregnancy wow. so and I didn't know that at the time but um that's when I started like my certifications and I got certified to to start teaching and, and stuff. So um, endurance, just running. I kept running. And so I was able to get out there and do another marathon two years after. And uh, much better that time, but <laughs> it, much better time. But I wasn't with my sister, so not quite as fun of a time, I guess. Did you know that you were talented or, you know, were performing well immediately in the marathon? Or did it take you a while to realize, hey, I'm pretty good at this? Oh gosh, no. Like I was, I was just out there and it, it didn't even matter to me really necessarily. It wasn't about that. It was just about going out there and I loved the energy. I loved the people and I didn't really care. Like I wanted to do well for me, but not ag against other people. Um, I was so in the dark on how training should be. So I hear people t like doing these times. I'm like, that's unbelievable. How do people get to that level? Like good for you. Mm -hmm. But I had no desire. I didn't even have a desire to try that um, because I didn't think I was more confident than I was as a teenager, but not quite that confident yet to think that if I fought for it a little bit more, I could be good. And so I didn't even really start dialing it in until after um, my third child. And, you know, 10 years later, I was like, oh, this endurance stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> And then I got pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by choice. It was choice. But, um, and so after my fourth is when I really was like, okay, I did X, Y, and Z without really focusing or knowing what I was doing. And that's when I really hired a coach and was like, let's dial it in a bit and see with me being dialed in rather than just like, I feel like doing a long run. I feel like doing this. Actually going off of a plan rather than just working out, made a huge difference for me. And, um, yeah, that's when I was able to really see, like, gosh, I, I'm okay out here. I'm okay. But I never thought, for, for the life of me, I never thought I'd go pro or that I'd ever be good enough. Um, and it wasn't even 
in my mind to go there. Um, in fact, like three weeks before I earned my pro card, I had an athlete, um, she was trying to get her pro card in triathlon and she's like, Ash, she's like, are you trying to get your pro card? And I laughed. I was like, no, no, I'm not there. I'm okay. I want to get this goal and this goal, but I'm pros for one. They're way too serious. They don't look like they're having fun out there. And I want to have, I want to keep it fun. Like that's what keeps me coming back is having it fun. And I didn't see the pros having fun. And I finished the next race. It was a triathlon in uh, St. George, and I, I earned my pro card. And my coach calls me. He's like, guess what happened? I was like, no way. I was, and, like, I didn't even know how you earned it. I had no idea. I was like, no way. It was a fluke. It was a fluke. I, I just had a great day. And, uh, and then a couple of months – or no, it was like a month and a half later, um, I did an Ironman, and I actually – I did really well at that one. And once again – my coach, he's like, this, you were beating the pros out, some of the pros out there. Like, what are you thinking? I was like, I don't want to take it that serious. I want to be good, but I don't care to go that serious. And my husband actually convinced me. He's like, what do you have to lose? Go out there, be you. And if you like it, great. If you don't, at least you tried. At least you tried it. And oh, saw what I that think that was good like. advice. And I'm really grateful that you did because it's been really fun. And, yeah. um, and I have been able to keep it fun and not so serious. I want to go back to when you got a coach, like what, was there something that triggered you? Like, was it like, I want to qualify for Boston or I want to do the sub three or what? Or stop hurting as much. What? Yeah. What <laughs> made you decide you wanted to be more serious and have a structured plan? Um, okay. So before my fourth child, I did have a coach and he, he helped me with that stuff. Um, that my goal, I'd already qualified for Boston and stuff, but, uh, I wanted to, qualify for Kona. Um, okay. I believe so you I really do love the tries. I do. I do. And it's funny how many people don't know that I'm a triathlete. Like, right. They look at me as a runner. Um, but I'm like, that's my, like more of my thing. Um, I don't know. Lately it's been more, more marathon, but, um, I mean, tries are expensive so already. It, I'm saying tri what, tries. That? I was saying tries are expensive already. And I'm guessing with four kids, you're taking everybody. If you go to Hawaii, you're taking the whole posse. You got the, you know, your husband and four <laughs> kids. They're not like, oh, you just go run Kona. They actually, it was just my husband and my parents that came oh, wow. with me to Kona. Once I got it. Yeah, my kids did stay home. Because races, it's not fun. Like, it's fun for me. But for the kids, like, it's more of a, okay, mom's got to go to check in. Mom's got to stay up her feet. You know? <laughs> And so Hawaii, like we're going on a family vacay, we're going on a family vacay, you know, like I want to be moving and hiking and all that stuff, not being like, I've got to stay off my feet. So that one, some of them they come to, um, but that one, they, they actually did stay home. So I really wanted Kona and that's why I decided to get a coach. And then I, um, I'd already earned my sub, like got a sub three in the marathon, just doing my self coaching and, and stuff, um, but then I got pregnant. Kona didn't happen. I went through four Ironman, three Ironman distances and failed miserably, but it kept me hungry for more. Like, like, I know I'm better than that. I just need to tweak this. I need to tweak that. And then, so I'm like, hey, I need to learn what I need to tweak because what I'm tweaking is not working. And so after my fourth, that's when I hired a coach and was like, help get me to Kona. And he did. He did, a, he did an amazing. And that's when I earned my pro card. So I didn't take it for a little while because I wanted to go to Kona as an age grouper. And, ah. um, and then I took it. I accepted it. You know, so, yeah, so that's when I decided. And it was great. Like, every coach I've had has educated me in different ways. And I'm so grateful for, for all of them. And their, their time that I had them has been super helpful. For our audience that might not know, can you explain what getting your pro card in the triathlon is and means? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a few different ways to do it. Um, but for me, it, like I earned it by being the first age grouper, not in my age group, but out of all the age groupers at a pro event. It has to be at a pro event. Um, and with that, that means you're able to go pro. That means you can race professionally and, and earn money that way. Because even at like the race that I told you that I earned it at, that I did really well at, um, even though I beat some of the pros, they got the money and I didn't. So you can't, ah. you can't even get the money. And I like, 
I'd feel bad about that. I'd be like, wait, no, you, you beat me. Here's some money. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but that's, that's where it's like, okay, you can earn money. And that's never one, one, one of the reasons that I did it. But it certainly was helpful to not have to pay for races and to be able to earn a little bit of money. I mean, luckily my family was not surviving off of my professional earnings as a triathlete because we would be very hungry. <laughs> you probably could give them free power bars though. <laughs> like um, maybe, yeah. 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 I'm like, and, you guys and, want some salt? <laughs> also, also for, for our uh, listening audience who's not familiar with triathlons, the Kona is basically the Boston. It, it might say, it, would yes. that be equivalent? Like Kona is the Boston. Of, yes, that oh, is man. the Boston. That is the championship. So in order to get to Kona, you have to place in your age group. Um, and so like depending on your age group, for mine, I'm in the 40 age group. Obviously, I'm racing pro, so it doesn't matter. But there's usually like one or, one or two slots for women. So I'd have to be the first one in my age group. It's not a time like Boston. Boston, they go off of a time. Ironman distance, they go off of a placement. So okay. it's different because Ironman, there's so many variables that go into that day, like how choppy the water was, how choppy or how windy the bike was. It's going to pull you back and it could affect, you know, you've got 10 to 17 hours out there um, rather than a marathon that it's just that section that they go off of a time to get you to Boston. Um, and so it's different in that aspect to qualify for Kona. So that was my goal as an age grouper. What I find interesting about the triathlons and the running portion is like when we go to do a marathon, there's a lot of emphasis put on the course. Like, is there stuff to see? Is the crowds big? Is, you know, uh, what's the elevation gain and loss when you do an Ironman event or, or something, it's usually loops. And it's usually not the most scenic place. It's usually like, uh, I did two. I did uh, one uh, down here called Eagle Man. And then I did uh, the Florida one. And both were through like, the running part was just through like a neighborhood and, and looping through. So it's a yeah. little bit different. I actually think for you guys, it's a whole different sport in the marathon just because I would have to feed off the other athletes because you're looping around. Yeah. But it's not the same as like a, a New York city marathon or, you know, some of these. Oh gosh. Yeah. No, it actually, my first time doing New York was this year. And, uh, I was, I was like, Holy cow. Like, I can't, <laughs> like it was great. I love it. I, I feed off of that, but I was like, I have never, I mean, I've done Boston one time. I have only actually done it with, um, I fit for I fit. Oh, wow. Um, but New York, cause like I said, my goal is iron man. Like, there's always Iron Man over Boston, so I choose yeah. Iron Man. But I did it um, in New York, and I was like, I don't even need my headphones. I was able to wear headphones. In Iron Man, you can't wear headphones. And I don't even need them because the crowd is so crazy, loud, and amazing, and the energy. And so you just have to tap into something different. You have to tap into, like, the demons in your mind and try to battle those because there is a lot of silence on Iron Man course. There's a lot of, like, dead time, and it's not super scenic. And I love loops for that reason with Iron Man. The more loops, the better, because that means I get more people. Um, if it's like an out and back two times, oh, you know it's going to be dead <laughs> silent. You know, 95% of that run, because people aren't going clear out there to go cheer you on, like, you know, at the turnaround point. So I look forward to loops, um, because I know the people, the energy will be better. I and mean, you don't have the music. You don't have... Um, anything besides the athletes out there and hopefully a person or two giving you some, some water. So you have this big goal to make it to Kona. You obviously make it to Kona. Was that everything that you dreamed of and expected it to be? It, it was great. It was really great. Um, I had a really bad day, but I made the most out of the day. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't super, um, yeah, it was just a rough day, and that's happened. I was in the best shape of my life, and I had one of my worst races out there, and that's that's racing for you. I was going to say that's that's triathlon, but no, that's just, that's just racing. Yeah. Um, you can be in such good shape and have everything perfectly lined up, and one little thing goes off, and you know you just got to deal with it and roll with the punches with a smile because 
you know, we, we paid for that <laughs> <We're> money. <laughs> yes. And so you make the most of it. And that's what I did on that day when it didn't turn out to be like everything or time-wise that I wanted it to be. I knew I could make something more of it with my attitude and cheering on the rest of the crowd rather than like being like disappointed in my time and disappointed in my feeling and not feeling good and blah, blah, blah. Cause we're all going to have those. So you gotta, you just gotta flip your mentality and um, turn it on to other athletes. And that's where I find my motivation is motivating others. That's awesome. Do you have any feelings towards like when you're out there and you're not having your best day and then you're like, but I'm actually pulling I, you know, I, you, 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 people know me from iFit. I'm a pro now in triathlon. Is there extra pressure or are you just like, it ain't my day. I'm just going to go with it. You know, like I, I really don't just because I've done so many, I mean, there's pressure that I put on myself, but I never put on pressure that other people are like, you know, they expect this out of me and, and people do like if people, they'll spot out say like, Oh, well, you're doing this race. You're going to win. You're going to do it. And I was like, well, for one, a lot of time, that's not my goal. My goal is it's a training day and I don't care where I place as long as I get my goal and that's my win. And I try to explain that to people and they don't seem to wrap their head around it. Um, they're like, but, you, but you're pro, you've got to win. Oh, you've been to the Olympic trials. You're going to win this. And I was like, that's, that's not my goal today. But even times that it is my goal, like just recently I, I did an event that I put it out there. I'm like, Hey, this is my goal. I want a sub six. And once I get off that sub six pace, I'm pulling back. Um, and that people were like, wait, you can't just pull back. I'm like, no, you got you got to stay my fitness and you just let people pass and you, you're okay with that. And I had people at work being like, you just let people like pass you. And I was like, yeah, I could have pushed a faster effort, but then I wouldn't have a great training week this week. You have to remember the long, what you're in this for. You're not just in it for that race. You're in it for the long run. I'm not an athlete that likes to pull out of races, but I don't mind pulling back. I like to finish what I start, no matter what the time is. Um, and, but then slow it down and make it a training day. And that's what I had to do a few weeks ago at uh, Woodlands. And you were like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, are you so bummed? I'm like, sure, you, you're bummed, but I'm okay. It's, it was 80 was something degrees at the start, right? <laughs> what was that? It was 80 degrees at the start, right? It was hot. Yeah. It was. That, that, and so. That anybody had a good day was amazing. Exactly. And that's where I was like. Sure, I could have pulled a faster time and maybe placed better, but then my it wouldn't have gotten me the trials goal, and it wouldn't have um, it would have just made me more tired for the next week. And then after the week after, I was able to have a solid training week, and that's what I that's what I had to look for. And um, and a lot of people don't get that, and I, and I'm okay with that. Um, just let them think their own little their thoughts, and you know, move forward and know what my personal goals are. So you brought up the trials time. So I have to, I, I have to ask about this. So first of all, you went in 2020, you made the Olympic, uh, qualifying time and ran that, the trials there. Tell us about that experience in Atlanta. Oh man, that was, that was, I mean, I just got chills. Like <laughs> even just thinking about it, because like I said, it was never even a goal of mine for so long. Um, like a sub three seemed out of the question, let alone going to the Olympic trials. I'm just this little girl that goes out for long runs because I'm crazy, you know, what a lot of people would say. Um, so to be able to get that goal, um, that was amazing. Super, super fun to be able to attack that dream and show people that, like, you know, I wasn't a, a track runner in high school or college. I mean, I didn't go to college, let's be real. So, you know, that wasn't my background. And so many people are like, you have to have that in your background in order to get that pace. Or you can't be a, a long-distance triathlete and get that pace. Don't expect that pace, Ashley. You've got too much muscle in your body to get that pace, Ashley. You Like all these things that people are feeding you in your head, Um and I very well could have listened and be like, oh, maybe they're right. I'll just stick with triathlon. But why not give it a try? And I failed a few times to get there. Like, um, I fell short. And every single time I was like, okay, well, 
I can either listen to everybody being like, I told you so, <laughs> or I could try it again and take a chance on myself and ignore them, the naysayers. Yes, I had people in my, my corner, of course. My husband's cheering me on all the time and, and a lot of uh, friends. But it's funny how those negative people stick in your head more than the positive sometimes. We've all dealt with that, right? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Those people that are like, Ashley, stick with what you're good at. You're not like... <laughs> isn't your background, um, going that fast. And so to be able to finally make it there on my fourth attempt for the trials, like I remember crossing that finish line at grandma's marathon, like throughout the course being like 244. That's all I see. That's all I'll do. Cause there's been other times that I went out too fast. Like I can go faster. I'm going to just hold this. I'm like, no, all I need is that six seventeen pace. Don't go any faster than that. So I'd say it out loud. Like that's all I need. That's all I do. That's all I see. That's all I do. Like imagining crossing that line at that, that 244. I don't care what number is be, as long as I saw that 244. Saying it out loud to pull back, but then when I needed to be able to push through. And and that's exactly what I did. I crossed that finish line at 244.52, I think. So <laughs> almost missed it again. Oh my gosh, I almost missed it again. But that's I dropped to the ground and I just started crying like I did it. Like, I I did this. Like, some girl without any type of background and uh, some girl that's this endurance junkie that they don't run fast. They just run long. And and uh, and I was able to do that. And it was such a great, great moment for me and to be able to toe the line with the best in the world or the best in the country. Wow, so cool. So these women that I've looked up to and admired and to be there on the same start line didn't seem real for you know, with me, like you'd ask me two years ago, I would have once again laughed and like, no, cause that wasn't my, my goal. Um, but once you make something your goal and you find, um, your will and you find that passion, you're going to find a way and you, you might not get it the first time, second time, third time's the charm. Oh wait, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was the fourth time. <laughs> it was the fourth time. Fourth time's pretty fast I, still. Yeah. <laughs> you know. What was that? I said fourth is still pretty fast, you know. Okay, well, amazing. yeah, it was a thank you. It was it was amazing. It was amazing to be out there, and um, it would be a dream to go back and toe the line again at those trials. Um, so they changed the time quite a bit from two forty five to a two thirty seven. I believe you have. Wait, a- what? <laughs> Did they? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm ah. totally kidding. I'm totally- I, <laughs> I, your face though was priceless. <laughs> um, I believe you have a two thirty six PR in the marathon. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. When did you run that, and where? That was three years ago. Okay. Three years ago. But with that said, that is that was on a supported course. Um, like there was downhill, and so to qualify for the trials that would not have been a qualifying course. Okay. There's too much elevation loss. So the course does matter. There's very select courses that they have for these, um, for the trials time. So yeah, I would not have qualified that day had it that been. But you have day. to have some confidence. Like I, like you had run that two forty four fifty whatever, um, and just made it for that cutoff time for for the trials in twenty twenty, and then since then dropped your time quite a bit, even further down. Um, when it when they changed the standard to two thirty seven, I think it was really really disheartening for a lot of women who were like right on that cusp of two forty five. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you have to have some. So first of all, what are your thoughts on it on the change, and then. Do you feel pretty confident because you have times so close to that or qualifying times? It, it does. Ha- like, honestly, even though it was a supported course downhill, like just knowing that I've seen that time, definitely your, your turnover, your legs, it's good to even practice those, those courses just to get those times and see those paces, what they feel like. And then slowly bringing those courses back to more legit courses. Um, I love downhill courses. I think they're a blast. But you have to be honest with yourself. Gravity helps. It just does, plain and simple. <laughs> um, and so when when I actually saw that time, because I was told in December, they're like, 
by somebody that's on the, the staff. Okay. They're like, there's no way they can change it because the world standard for women is 245. So they're not going to make us any faster, maybe a 243, but you know, again, going back to that. So I was like, Oh, okay. Um, and actually I hired a coach, a coach in December. And, uh, when I contacted him, I was like, I really feel like I can get a 235. Um, I'd love for you to coach me for that on a, like a, a solid course. And, um, and then a few weeks later, they actually announced that time and he texts me, he's like, how do you feel about this? And, uh, I said, honestly, I'm kind of giddy about it because the fact I wanted that anyway, I wanted that goal. It's scary because I was like, oh man, uh, not being like, I'm, I'm confident that I, I could see another 244 um, on a course. But this is going to like really force that extra challenge, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. I mean, I'm 40, and I feel like I can get faster. Um, and it's like I don't feel like my speed needs to be decreasing yet. I know age happens, and it's going to, but I feel like I still have time to build into that. So I was actually like, my my comment to him was giddy, and he's like, yes, that's <laughs> what I wanted to hear. And I was like, that was my goal anyway. But now this is just really. Extra you motivation. can't have a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to just have that goal. And so I'm really excited. It's going to be a challenge. A sub six for 26.2 <laughs> miles. Um, that's fast. So fast. That's fast. Like, it, it is. like, And uh, I just, like sometimes when I'm doing mile repeats, I'm like, oh my gosh, I struggled with that one. How am I going to do that for 26 miles? And, but race day hits and you know, your adrenaline and you just hope for those stars to align and you put in your best work and that's what it's about and having a good mm. time. And if it happens, when it happens, you, you, you just got to be like embrace your process that you're like the time that you're in, the process that it takes to get there. Cause it didn't happen. At, I wasn't even close at Woodlands. Like my coach asked me, he's like, how many miles did you hold at your six? Because that was our goal. It was more of a practice run. Um, and he's like, let's see how many miles we can hold at that sub six. And then he, he made me promise. Once I got up one minute off of that, I would pull back to a seven minute pace, no faster. And I was like, that was going to be hard because I know I can run a 635. So why not get a better time? But I'm looking at the big picture. So I promised him. I didn't hold one mile. At that pace oh. it was hot that day yeah. it was everything like so i was like it, it's gone it's not there and but i still wanted like a solid day like or at least half of it so i did kind of break my promise and go a little bit faster that first half but then i pulled it back i kept kept my word and pulled back and uh was able to, to have a great training run that day so yeah. with that a heat thousand of my friends yeah that heat was insane like i don't i i yeah. don't i Were don't you know there? No, we, we've, we watched it though and, and followed it and, and we've run woodlands before. And so I was just thinking like, I don't know if I would have even lined up. I think I would have just been 80 degrees is not going to do anything, but like hurt my soul. <laughs> you know? yeah. I live in Florida okay, um, and I'm very used to the heat, but I, I knew like almost right. Like things have to line up. Like I said, like the weather, it, it matters 80 degrees and that 60, 70% humidity. That's going to slow everybody down. And we, with me being barely on that threshold anyway, it's going to be a push to get to that six. Um, I pretty much knew like it was going to be a shortly lived sub six that I was going to do that day. And I was totally fine with that. I mean, it was very shortly lived. I think I hold up for a half a mile. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it that shortly lived, but <laughs> you know, and that was okay. That was okay roll with it. Right. And now I get to go to the line again. So, so I have two questions off of that. One is how do you recover? Like you race all the time and race well all the time. Like how, what are you doing in between these races that you are recovering well, and then being able to toe the line healthy and crush it like race after race? Oh, thank you. Well, gosh, I, I don't feel like I crush it all the time, uh, but thank you. I, uh, <laughs> A lot of these events I'm going to as, as training okay. runs. And so it's not like I'm racing, racing, giving it like a hundred percent. That's going to put the fatigue on my body. Like I said, I love to show, to toe the line, whether it's a training day or a pacing day that I'm pacing other athletes just to be there is a big deal for me. Uh, I think it's just fun. It's, um, 
part of my life and I never wanted that part of my life to, to go away. So recovery is a big deal to me. I make sure that my sleep is, I'm a, I got to get my eight hours. It, it drives my family crazy when we're in town and they want to play games. I'm like, it's nine o'clock. He's <laughs> up. <laughs> He is so huge and people don't understand, like, especially as an athlete that puts, like, exerts so much energy in, in fitness and, and racing, like that sleep is where that recovery happens. And I am a stickler on sleep and I do, I love to eat and that's huge on, on recovery as well. Getting that food in at the proper times, making sure you're getting, um, enough fluids and stuff while you're training, while you're racing, because that's what's going to really make you sore is when you're depleted and then you keep pushing. And I try to not allow myself to get to that point of depletion unless I'm like racing, racing that I know like I'm out for a little while, which is fine. Um, and so that's one of the reasons I'm able to keep coming back strong. And it's taken me years and years to build up to this too. My body knows this. Like I said, when I was 20, I would be teaching four or five classes a day and, you know, like that helped build up that endurance, helped build my body's um, resilience and be able to like, okay, this is what we do. We have to recover tonight because she's going to go do it again tomorrow. <laughs> and so your body learns to repair faster off that. Um, and the more you do it, the more, the faster you're going to recover as long as, you know, you're getting that proper nutrition and sleep. So I think that's been huge for me is what a sleep snob I am. <laughs> I mean, ask my poor husband, the poor guy. Like, bye. bye, bye. Uh, and so, and then if I don't get that sleep, like if something's going on with the kids and stuff, I make sure I get a nap okay. um, to make sure I get those, those hours in. So I think that's for anybody, whether you're an athlete or not, that sleep is huge, but especially for an athlete. For sure. I'm with you on the sleep. Um, well, good, right. So you are an iFit trainer. Uh, like that's your profession, like you, you're doing that during the day, but then you have this goal of qualifying for the Olympic trials in the marathon, which is very specific training, I imagine. How do you yes. balance that? Like, do things have to be shifted around or do you just make it all work somehow? Well, um, that was one thing when I hired my coach, I have Ryan Hall as my coach. I'm very blessed to have him, that he accepted me as an athlete. Um, one of the best in the world um, that he's able to work around my schedule. I said, I fit is, is not an option to stop that. Cause I've had other coaches be like, well, you can't do this. You can't do that. And I'm like, that's not an option. This is what I do. And I can't have you saying to get off my feet for this time because uh, like it's my job for one. And I love it. I, um, I don't need to be the best in the world, but I feel like with my, my past and things that I've been able to do on loaded legs, I feel like we can shave off that time and be able to get that sub 237. And he's like, yeah, I, I agree. Let's work together. Um, I work at iFit. Right now I'm three days a week and, uh, you know, f four classes on those days. And those are my easy days with him. And then my days on like Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays are my harder efforts, VO2s, longer runs. Um, so every day I'm working out a lot. But I make sure that the days that, it, like, it's the really key runs, um, it's a day that I'm not at iFit, that I've already come home and I've already got 20, 25,000 steps on my, my feet, you know, before I attack those runs. Um, and so he works with me on that. And he's so good on that. And there are times that, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, crap, I know what I have going on, so I will adjust the training that I have for iFit, be like, okay, maybe today I don't want to take them to 40% because I know what I got to do <laughs> later today. But we'll adjust that, still give them a great workout, of course, but yeah. let's not take them to 40% today. <laughs> um, and then other days, if Ryan's given me too easy of a run, that never happens. No, if it, like, then I'm like, oh, let's go to 40% today and, and push a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, it's something that I've always had to um, juggle a little bit as an athlete teaching classes and um, and going out and competing. There was that short time after I had my son that my coach was like, he did have me quit teaching classes. It was before I was with iFit. And I was sad. I was so sad. It was such a big part of my life. I had been doing it for so many years. And he's like, listen, Ashley, you can be good at a lot of things, and you're good. And I was like, thank you. 
And he's like, I'm not done. But if you want to be great, you need to focus. I'm like, oh, oh. And he's right. He's right. Um, you do need to focus. But right now, just being a triathlete or just being a runner is not my goal. I feel like I fit is like it's such a part of my life now and I love sharing my passion and I've always whether it's at a little rec center in the middle of town um with you know 60 year old ladies coming in I love it and so to be able to do both right now it's a dream so maybe I'm not number one triathlete okay I'm still doing what I love in both worlds and to my coaches my a long time ago what he said like you can be good or you can be great um you know I'm Right now, I'm okay with being being good and being able to dabble in triathlon, marathon, I fit, hundred milers. I I'm happy, and that's that's enough for me. I don't need to be number one in one sport um, if that's what fuels my heart. You know. Well, it's funny we were talking uh, earlier today about Sarah Hall and her pension for running races, and she had said to people. A lot of people would say, I run too many races, but this is what I like doing. Mm -hmm. And shouldn't yeah. I be doing what I think is fun? You know, I got to keep it fun for myself. So Yes, and I love that. I love that's exactly what Ryan said to me, actually, when I um, was talking to him on the phone, like um, seeing if we wanted to, um, if I could be his athlete or if this was going to work, this relationship was going to work. Because I'm like, I like to race a lot. And I wasn't super familiar with Sarah. Like, I, I don't follow a lot of athletes. I just kind of do my thing and do my life. And I've got four kids. Yeah. <laughs> I can't follow a lot of athletes. Like, I don't follow a lot of stories. And he shared that with me. And I was like, really? That's interesting. And then I went back and looked at her story. I'm like, wow, she does. Yeah. And she's really good. Mm -hmm. And she's okay, like, if she needs to pull back. I'm like, see? And so I feel like Ryan gets that. And I need that. I need him to get that. I want to toe the line, whether it's going to be my PR day or training day. I love that. And so he gets that because he deals with that with her, deals. And yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I think it was hard for him for a while. He's like, no, you don't toe the line unless you're ready for a PR. Um, but that's how she is. And so it works great that he's already had somebody else with that and sees that she does well. And, yeah. And, um, and just the fact so is, like, what, what are we doing if it's not enjoyable? Exactly. Exactly. I was, I was having, um, I was actually at an award ceremony, like probably two years ago, uh, this Ironman and I was sitting with this athlete and she's an incredible athlete. She's so good, so fast. And, uh, she's talking about retiring and just like, uh, I just, once I retire, I'm never telling the line again. Uh. And that was so sad to me. Like, I was, I didn't even, I like, I think I went silent, which is a rare occasion. For me. <laughs> I was like, really? I love it. And I want to continue to love it. I don't want to look at it as a, as a job. This is a passion. And I, I tell people, I'm going to be running to my grave. You know, like just, if there's a race, where's it at? Like put my bib on, let's run to the grave. And, and, and that's one thing that I feel has um, done in my favor that I Take it serious enough to be good, um, a faster runner, not the fastest. Um, but then I also am having a blast out there. I'm able to um, cheer others on and not get so in my head and so serious that it keeps me wanting to come back. And once it turns any other way, I don't, I don't want to do it professionally anymore. I don't because I want this forever. This is not just about this run or this year. I want to do this forever. And, you know, that's one thing that just blew my mind when I heard that. I was like, oh, she's like, yeah, a lot of tr like pros feel that way. I'm like, really? Whoa, that's so sad to me. Yeah. I didn't share that with her, but I was like, oh gosh. And I told my husband later, I was like, you never let me feel that way. Then if, if I am like, pull me back and we got to take this to the the reason why we why I started this and that's because I love it so what number marathon was the woodlands for you oh marathon number 97 okay that's insane 97. and amazing and do you have a big plan for number 100 oh my gosh okay I really I really wanted to do uh the china wall this year for okay my 100th. they canceled it so 
100's not going to, I mean, I like to toe the line way too much. So 100's <laughs> going to come at me. Fast. Can't wait. You guys have any ideas? I, I don't want it to just be like, you know, a race. Yeah. Maybe that'll be the one that I qualify, right? Oh. That would be cool, but that means I need to do it. It wouldn't be, yeah. More. It wouldn't be on the Great Wall of China, I don't think. <laughs> Have you have you seen? You no, know, I won't be qualifying there yeah. because they canceled that one. I was gonna do it with my my daughters. Yeah. Um, and I think that would have been a cool one. It wouldn't have been a fast one, that's for sure. Yeah. If been. you've seen the course, it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's so a if you guys have any suggestions? I'll drop them my way because that was it. And okay, now. I'll I'll think on that. But so, what is next for you? I'm assuming you have something lined up. I do actually. Um, I just I spoke with Ryan yesterday, and we adjusted some goals of mine um, over the weekend. My husband and I competed in a ultra triathlon, um, which is like double the Ironman distance. Oof. And I, during that time, I was just like, you know, my hip kind of has been bugging me at these paces he's been giving me, and it's never bugged me before. I'm never one to run through these pushes. But these faster efforts that I'm not used to, the, some of these workouts he's given me, I have not done before and I'm loving it. But right now I actually have an opportunity to run Badwater, um, mm. the 135 yeah. mile race oh, wow. in July. And I just found out about that. And I was like, I, I messaged Ryan. I was like, Hey, you're not going to like my plan, but I'm going <laughs> to, I need to chat with you. And he's like, Oh boy. I said, just make sure you're sitting down and just have an open mind and <laughs> I want your help on some, a project. And he's like, no, his, his message was, oh boy. Mm. <laughs> I was like, who's not up for a challenge, right? So yesterday, actually, we adjusted things. I was going to go out to Copenhagen in about, uh, Copenhagen, I guess is how you say it, in nine weeks. But we adjusted it. He's actually going to really help me um, dial in bad water, which is not his area. Yeah. Um, and so why would I do that? Like... Do you have your whole crew lined up? No. <laughs> I need to do that, right? I need to do that. Yeah. I know. It's a big deal. It is. Um, I mean, I kind of I kind of do, but um, there's a lot more planning in this involved than I was aware of. Holy mackerel. Um, but I was reading or listening to a podcast of the, the lady that just broke the world record of the 100 miler. Camille Heron. I don't remember her name. Yeah. There you go. Yes. And I was listening to her podcast and her training because I'm like, okay, this bad water's coming up. I've done a couple of hundred milers, and but this is hot. It's 135 degrees at 135 uh, or 135 miles at 130 degrees, right? And it ends up um, hell. very unique. <laughs> and yeah, there's the uphill. And uh, but her training was all marathon training. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like how I visualized these hundred milers. Um, going out there to do these races, like 60 miles on the weekend. I'm like, how do I do that? Like, I don't have time for that. Um, I do. I just had to send, spend my time differently. Um, and I was listening to the her and I was like, well, I wonder if that's why I did pretty decent in the hundred milers that I've competed in. I was able to toe the line for three 100 mile races and with last minute notice, because that's how I like to roll. Um, most of Two of them were within a week of me registering. Me like, I've never done this. Let's go try. And I was able to win all three of them and break two of the course records. And with that, that my training was marathon and Ironman. And then hearing her podcast and something like, maybe she's onto something. And maybe like that works for me. So I was talking to Ryan about this. I was like, we just need to continue on doing what we're doing. Postpone the trials until after Badwater. And he's like, Ashley, this is not my area. I was like, I know, but listen, I can be your project. And if it doesn't work, it's on me. It's on me. And so we're going to try this, guys. We're going to see how it goes. I would love to go out there and uh, smash bad water. Obviously, anything can happen on race day. But just to go toe the line knowing that I've um, put in some solid work and, and see what this training can do. It's very different compared to a lot of um, ultra runners. So we're going to experiment. It's going out there. Now it's out to everybody listening. So. That'll be fun. <laughs> That's That'll awesome. That'll be fun to, yeah. to, to watch you do that. We've had a couple yeah. friends who have done it, and it's it's a challenge. Oh, really? Yeah. We had yeah, a, yeah. one of our friends, Don, came in third place. Uh, I don't know. What is that? Three, four years ago? I think so. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah I think. And you could live it, track, so it was it fun. It will be. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I, with us that small of um, participants, yeah. I didn't realize they'd have that much. But it's so it's lower number of participants, but it's very, very. He said millions of people watch because yeah. it's such a hard event that people really are curious. And so yeah, Ryan and I are going to work on on a attacking Badwater marathon prep style. Yeah, I, th- I, I like think it. It's going to be interesting. I, yeah. I think Ryan can do But then anything. I'm going to do a couple Ironmans in between to help <laughs> without do. all that impact. Yeah. Get those Ironmans in. Like doing that double Ironman over the weekend, I was like, this is it. Like, and I felt so good. Um, I felt so good running so, off the bike after 224 miles running or biking and like yeah. going to do 52 miles. I was like, I felt so good. And that's four, like, hey, four mile swim, is, right? Would it double be 4.8? Oh, geez. 4.8. Yeah. Oh, that's just and ridiculous. And then a 224 mile bike ride yeah. followed by a 26.2 mile run. And this is not day one, day two, day three. This is all in, you have 36 hours to complete it. Um, and so my husband and I were able to do that this weekend. It was so great. Um, uh, that's amazing. I, did, I can't I even well. imagine like, what the saddle feels like after 200 miles. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Don't talk to my husband about that right now. <laughs> It was, it was, I was laughing hysterically, but I don't think it's a laughing matter quite yet. It might be yeah. too soon. Yeah. Oh, I can't even imagine. <gasps> that was his first time ever doing it. I had done that before, but he never has. So mm. it was all new for him. I was so proud of him. He came in second place too. He oh, did wow. really great. That's amazing. That's amazing. That is amazing. <clears throat> How many people did it too? <laughs> <laughs> I don't exactly. No, there's not a lot of people that do those events. And so, and a lot of people crazy. actually backed out. Yeah. <laughs> It is, and we had really bad weather on Saturday. Yeah. Once the run came in, they had to um, pull us all off the course and pause the race. But with them pausing the race, it doesn't pause your time. Uh, your time is still ticking, and so you saw that same cutoff. So a lot of people were like, you know, I'm not going to get it. I'm out of here. And oh, that's and we're like, no, we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to get this, and, and he was able to get that cut off, and, and you know, Slow Way to go, man. Way to go. So you just did that this fun. weekend. We're recording on Wednesday and you feel great? <sighs> I do. Yeah, I feel pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I was able to do my training yesterday that Ryan already had loaded before okay. he knew I was doing this double line, man. And yeah, I hit 22 miles yesterday and I was able to hit the pace as he wanted. And I was I was actually shocked at that. I actually texted Holy him. Holy cow. Like, oh, I'm actually so good. I feel so good. And uh uh, but yeah, like my body's built, like it's just it had years of this. It's ready for it. This mm. didn't happen overnight. It was, it was a lot of time, decades of progressing slowly and yeah, we know a lot of runners though. Perfect. And I, I don't know too many that could do, uh, a five mile swim, a, uh, like 120 mile or 240 yeah. mile Bike well, and, they put their mind to it. It's up just, here. No, it's not. When you wake up on Wednesday and do <laughs> do a twenty-two mile run, it's not all up in your head. <laughs> yeah, see, my husband, we're not putting him out for two miles. Like we're yeah. not having him run this week. That was yeah. his first time. We're, you know, and I'm like, I'm just like still proud of him every time he comes waddling in with his blistered feet. Mm. Oh, um, the poor kid. I, so it's his I, feet. His muscles are fine. His blisters. I feel for him. I feel for him. I I also have a wife that outperforms me in <laughs> in, in athletics. So, yeah. You just got to take your hat off and be like, good job, babe. Good yeah. job. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Ashley, we are at the hour mark, so I don't want to keep you too much longer. But we do have some end of podcast questions I would love to ask you. And actually, one thing I did want to ask you about your iFit training life is, have you gone anywhere that was like amazing for, for iFit, like one of the bike rides that you did? Is there anywhere you've traveled to through iFit that you were like, this is the best place ever? Oh my gosh, that's so hard. Cause like <laughs> everywhere we've gone, it's been amazing. Um, I think the place that I was most blown away with um, was heading to Japan. Um, I, that country is beautiful and the people and the cleanliness and how much respect they have for each other and their country, not just like they keep it so clean. And I'm like, wow, like they care about it. And, and just, it was a phenomenal experience. It was way too long away from the family, but um, 
I was able to go do Mount Fuji there for I fit take all the viewers to see like they can all experience Mount Fuji and, and what it's like to, to climb that mountain and then we were able to do some cycling series out there um, go through the islands and uh, it was it was breathtaking I had such an amazing time out there um, but gosh you can't Swiss Alps I was able to ride on the some of the Tour de France, like, like I fit it's incredible what they can do. They're giving you an experience, not just a workout. It's an experience that you're getting. And then you're like, wow, I got a workout too. That's great. I just, <laughs> I just thought you can. Um, and so I feel really blessed that I've been able to do that as a job. But man, Japan, it has to be at the top of the list there for sure. That stings a little bit. We were supposed to go to Japan this year for the marathon and it obviously, the, they won't let us in the country, so yeah. next year. Dang it. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, next year, you got to get out there. Okay. Yeah, it's we're we're beautiful. scheduled to go next year, so. Yeah. Good, go. good. You'll love it. You'll love it. But just know it's it's a rough thing to try to find a garbage can. They'll just come <laughs> and take it from your hand, which I felt bad. I'm like, it's my trash. You don't need But they hide even their garbage cans. Wow. Oh, that's they just awesome. Don't want it. so it's, it's cool. It's cool. All right, I get to go back to one of my first questions from earlier in the show. Oh yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, what's what's your shoe of choice for the marathon? Okay, I I'm a Nike junkie now. That Alpha Fly. Ah, oh, <laughs> we get it. I love it. Yeah, is that what you guys run in? Oh yeah, yeah. It is. It's just a cloud. I don't care if I'm running fast or slow. It's amazing. I didn't even try it till like the Olympic trials day when they gave it to us. And I'm so glad I did because it was like, I gave up my sponsorship the day before. I'm like, I can't do it. The shoe feels too good and feet matter. And it, they've been magic ever since. So I can't go back to anything else. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Once you, once you feel that yeah. bounce and that, that it just I, gives you so much confidence. Uh, but my husband hates them, it, you know, so it's not for everybody. Like he has calf pains and stuff with him. So it's not for everybody, but man, is it for this girl? I am with you on that one. <laughs> okay. Right. Yes. Um, headphones or no headphones on a solo run? Headphones. Okay. And oh, I, I, we got to know you do playlists on your iFit thing. Do you, are your playlists similar in your headphones or do you have a specific uh, like playlist that you like to listen to when you run? Oh, what plays on iFit is not my playlist. All right. So what, what do we listen to? No, yeah. Oh gosh, I've got he doesn't, punk rock music. He doesn't, I'm a punk rock girl. Yeah, he doesn't use the oh, that. He doesn't understand. I hear it though. <laughs> I hear it in the background. There's but, yeah. music that plays, but that's just streaming from iFit, yeah. not me. Okay. I I like punk rock. Give me the. I mean, I mean, gosh, I got Green Day on right now. Like, give me yeah. my punk yeah. rock. Um, and I think it just takes me back to, you know, my concert days. That aren't over, awesome. I guess. I still go. But, yeah, I love headphones. <laughs> okay. Um, most what races, is, races you can't use them, so. Yeah. What is your celebratory post-race meal or beverage or both? If people always make fun of me because it's so boring, but it's my favorite. I bring Depending on, of course, how hot it is or how cold it is. If I'm cold, I don't want anything to do with cold food. But if it's a hot race, I want a smoothie, a bowl, like an acai bowl with like bananas. And stuff. that's my favorite. And then about an hour or two after people are going out for these hamburgers, these gourmet things. I just want like a super salty, like perfectly crisp grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. That's so simple on like grandma's bread, grandma's Sigmore's bread with American nasty fake cheese. <laughs> <laughs> My teeth into that, I, you got a happy girl. All right. And then drink. I, I'm, I'm a water girl. I don't drink anything. I don't drink alcohol ever. So uh, I'm not one that's like, hey, let's go to a beer after. People always get excited because I give them my beer tag. Nice. That's ph <laughs> philanthropic. If you ever run, you need that beer tag. I got you. All right. Because right. I've never, never touched a beer after a race. So. Okay. Final question for you. If you were not an iFit trainer, what would you be doing? <laughs> Okay, in my dream. Okay, I. This goes back to my music. I would love to be on stage, a little punk rock girl, like jamming out, singing my heart out. Only problem is, I don't know how to play any type of <laughs> instrument, and I don't sing well. That's but fine. I do both anyway. 
And I would, I would love to be a singer. I think that would be amazing. I think that's fair. Yeah. If you, if you can, yeah, if yeah. you can run a two thirty five marathon, you can learn how to sing, and yeah. they can auto tune you. You'll <laughs> <Yeah>. be fine. <laughs> Nobody would listen, but oh yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to listen to me at karaoke. But I have, I have a blast doing it. Yeah. I think that would be amazing. Be little on stage, go tour. I love it. All right, Ashley, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for coming on. It was super fun to get to know you a little more and hear about the exciting adventure you're about to go on this summer. Thank you so much for your guys' time, your energy, your just the love. I appreciate it. And uh, hey, let's ride again soon. Yes. Yeah. I, I might have to get on the bike and check it out. Yeah. You right. have to now. Just know it's not my playlist. All right. I will. You know what? I'll just put on some Green Day and just go over the top. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I love it. Thanks, Bye. Ashley. All right.